Okay, we're live. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yes. We're for a little late, I think. <laughs> yes, we're a little late. We apologize. Uh, we were trying to get our guest on, but um, as fate would have it, it didn't, didn't work out, right? <laughs> so welcome to Everything is Attitude. Fate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, welcome to Everything is Attitude. Welcome, Rosemary. <laughs> Good evening, Alan. How are you? I'm I'm doing really well. It's uh, are you a smooth, rested? smooth smooth sailing today. Smooth are you, sailing. Are you rushing and rushing? <laughs> rushing um, rushing is a state of mind, right? Well, let me say hello to everybody first of all. Do we have anybody actually? Because uh, uh, Maggie just said Maggie we're... just said yay that she's on. So yeah. <laughs> well, good. You know what? Uh, Greg, Greg always says to me, uh, if you have one person in an audience, that's all you're there for. So I'm going to apologize because as we... <laughs> <laughs> of course, um, as we as we start, right, Rosemary? As we begin, <laughs> uh, you can all probably hear in the background this awful buzzing sound. There's not a great deal I can do about it. Of course... It was very quiet until we went live, but I don't think it's going to continue. I'm having the house and the pool uh, power washed, and uh, the guy was supposed to do it early on today, uh, but he didn't get here till late, and now he's sort of happily going away with it, and I don't want to say no to him because I don't know when he'll come back again, so my apologies to everybody. Anyway, all right, let's... What are we going to talk about, Al? First of all, I think we should mention, why don't you tell uh, everyone about who, the guests that we were going to have on and the subject that we were going to be talking about because uh, we're hoping to get him back on next week. Yes, yeah, so, so um, yes. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we were going to have a guest, actually my cousin, Danny. Um, uh, we have uh, my other cousin, Vicky, who has Down syndrome. That's the brother, uh, Danny's the brother uh, of Vicky. So he was going to come on and t just talk about Down syndrome and his experiences um, having a sister with Down syndrome um, and uh, really having a, a positive, uh, great attitude about that. He's an amazing guy, um, and I can't wait to bring him on. And he has an amazing outlook on life in general. Uh, but uh, the way he is uh, with Vicky and the family is with Vicky is, uh, is, is, is an exemplary a way that uh, people I'm sorry, should man. What is that noise behind you? I don't know. Is there a noise behind me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is just obviously one of those, uh, one of yes. those times when yes. we continue to have a very positive attitude about all this. Exactly. I'm going to try outside and see if that works. All right. So while you're walking and so on, we were actually... Um, is this better out here? Yeah, probably. Okay. We were actually going to be talking uh, about, well, Danny was actually going to be talking to us about his sister and how uh, the family deal with the, the situation of a child who is born with, um, uh, with, I'm not even sure, should I say an infirmity? I can't ask your cousin because he's not here. Um, I have heard it said by people who do have children with Down syndrome that every single family should have or adopt a Down syndrome child because they give, they bring to the to the family so much love and you know, and they they bring so much to a family unit. But that's for next week. Um, but I had one of those. Well, maybe it's even two or three weeks. And in fact, uh, I don't know if some of you have been watching on Thursday morning, on the Thursday morning show, um, that people have been talking about their kids and some of the kids that they've been talking about have been uh, in one way or another disabled or perhaps not as um, physically the same as the rest of us. I hate to use disabled because so many kids who are born to this earth with those, let's say, disabilities, let's call it that for, for the sake of it for now, 
are they they come here for a reason they come here to help us they come here to teach us and some of those uh kids who are um uh, disabled or perhaps not quite as physically able or adept as the rest of us um are what we call earth angels and i was introduced to an earth angel a few years ago his name was tomas and uh i don't know if you remember al but she came on our thursday morning show the, the mother of tomas came on our uh, Thursday morning show to talk to us about Thomas and to talk to us about how uh, how he was doing and um, this kid was born perfectly normally and after a few years I think I'm I'm talking off the cuff now I'm not sure quite how old he was but four five six years old he started to get certain symptoms and he ended up with this awful debilitating uh, disease. Um, it's too long a word, I couldn't even possibly remember it. I can hardly say it when it's written in front of me. But it basically, his whole system has been over the period of several years, I think he's in his teens now, and over the years his system has totally started to slowly shut down. Uh, he was very quickly in a wheelchair and then was unable to talk and unable to express himself. He was unable then to, to move, to do anything at all. So this kid sits in his wheelchair and relies, has to rely on, on his family and the people around him to pretty much do everything for him because he cannot express himself. Having said that, when I met him, it was a very weird situation. You can read the story uh, in whichever book it's in. I can't even remember which story, which book it's in now. I'm not doing very well because I'm not prepared uh, <laughs> quite. But anyway, you can read his story in one of my books, uh, how he actually came out of his body, lifted out of his body, and because his mother had booked a consultation with me, and he lifted out of his body and he came to visit with me. And the experience was so stunning and so amazing because he came in this brilliant white, white light. And um, Grey Eagle told me then that he was an earth angel and it was a really stunning experience. And earth angels come to us, they give us the opportunity, uh, they give us many opportunities in fact, uh, when we're around people who are who are having disabilities of one sort or another, they come here to give us the opportunity to learn, to grow, to become more of who we are. Um, they, you know, they give us opportunities to express and to feel not just sympathy but empathy. They give us the opportunity. They give our kids the opportunity to you know, that those kids who are, let's say use the word normal they give those kids the opportunity to be around them and to be and to be giving and loving and sharing and unafraid of the fact that um, you know that people are different because I think as adults as we get older I think we get pretty scared don't we when we see someone who is different than we are um, we we get nervous we get scared even even the same with somebody who we know is got a, uh, a terminal illness, we tend to rather cross over and walk on the other side of the street. Or we, you know, many of us tend to avoid those situations because they are scary situations and they make us feel very, very vulnerable. And especially with children, when we see children in wheelchairs or we see children struggling, whether it's a mild form of a struggle or a more severe form of a struggle, I think it's because it's children, we feel so helpless as adults, we feel completely useless as what to do and how, and how we can help those children. But every time we are faced with one of these children, we are given an opportunity again and again, and I believe that God gives us an opportunity again and again and again to become aware of the vulnerability of the physical body, the vulnerability of who we are, but it also we have the opportunity to reach out 
and to show that we're, first of all, even if we are a little afraid to face our vulnerability, if we reach out, we can conquer that, we can be brave about it, we can give to those children, even if it's a smile, even if it's just to hold the hand, even if it's just to talk to them or spend some time with them. So, you know, we were going to have a deeper discussion today, but I would urge anybody out there who's listening to this, if you have a child who is considered disabled, if you have, uh, if you are caring for someone in this situation, or if you, if you'd like to come on the show, if you'd just like to put your comments into us, we are going to talk about this much more in depth next week when... His name is, I've forgotten his name, your cousin's name. Uh, Danny. Danny. We're going to talk about this much more in depth when Danny comes on, but I think it's a perfect opportunity now to sort of prepare the ground a little bit, Al, don't you? Don't you, don't you think so? And I do, to, yeah. And to, you know, if there is somebody out there who has had an experience or who has had that huge responsibility placed upon them how did how do you deal with it how did you deal with it and for those of us who have family and friends who have to deal with this situation what can we do to help how can each of us individually uh help the family who who is going through this i think first of all, i think it, it it leads to a broader topic of uh you know when when someone is you know quote unquote different um, there are a lot of taboo subjects, right? The taboo things oh, yes. um, throughout life. And, you know, a disability, uh, Down syndrome, uh, you know, even someone with Tourette's where they blurt out things um, randomly. Uh, I think, I think it's, it would be much easier for people to um, be okay with and be comfortable with and just you know, except if it wasn't such a taboo subject. And I think a lot of these things are, are so taboo and people don't even broach the subject. I mean, you talk about, you know, uh, the, the process or, or the, the, of death and going, uh, going through dying is, is one of those subjects. So I think, I think at our attitude really, uh, we would benefit as a society as people if, if we, didn't have these subjects that are taboo because what it does is it alienates, it isolates those people that are at the other end of that taboo uh, subject, right? Those people that do have disabilities, uh, don't, you know, do we, do you look at somebody? Do you not look so, at somebody? Do you talk to somebody? Do you not talk? And it's all, it all stems from um, whatever is considered taboo. We don't talk about and we don't want to, uh, you know, have in conversation. I think, so many of us are actually afraid uh, because in these circumstances we are so reminded it's sort of in our face uh that we physically as human beings we are so vulnerable in a in a heartbeat we can be walking down the street and something can happen and something you know a car can come along and hit us the next thing we know we're paralyzed i mean you know so the shooting incidents there's all sorts of stuff that goes on in our world that that uh, really uh, we are extremely vulnerable in this, you know, in, in, in our physical, uh, in the physical sense. And it, it, I think so many people are very nervous. They don't want to face it. They're very nervous about that. You know, that old saying there, but for the grace of God, go I. And it's very, very true. That Rosemary, I think you froze. If somebody can come and see if Rosemary froze or I froze, not sure. Oh, there we go. Oh, now we have two of you. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, I wasn't sure if I froze or you froze. This uh, is I, I just went off. 
Did it really? Maybe we're not supposed to do this, or maybe seriously, <laughs> or or maybe this is a test for us on how yes. positive our attitude could be. Yes, I'm exactly. Just gonna keep going. <laughs> uh, so, as I was saying, you know, it's sort of a, it's about a vul- the, the when we're faced with these situations, we're also faced with our own vulnerability. But I also, I mean, I've been in hospitals. I've been around kids, especially. But I've been around many people who are disabled who are in wheelchairs as a healer for more than 40 something years now. I mean, uh, you know, I've been asked to go into all sorts of situations and environments. And um, it amazes me uh, when you, you have a person in a wheelchair or a child in a wheelchair who obviously uh, speaks your language, can understand you. But the, somebody will come up and start talking to the person who's pushing the wheelchair as opposed to, you know, they'll ask questions of the person who's pushing the wheelchair as opposed to asking the person in the wheelchair. I mean, in some ways, there are so many of us who treat the person, it's almost as if they don't exist because we don't want to see. And yeah. I think, I think um, we can do something about that in in some ways it always amazes me that uh there there are you got you just have to google how many uh groups there are with uh, you, for people in every walk of life with every every situation going on from divorce from death from suicide from uh you know children with disabilities uh for you know there's the there's the group for this, there's the group for that, and so on and so forth, which encourage people who are dealing with those issues to go there and to learn more, which is a great thing. However, when are the rest of us ever invited? When is it made public? And I, I really feel that so many of these organizations should invite those of us who are not necessarily going through this that we should target everybody. I think everyone should be invited to go to some of these sessions because, uh, first of all, it takes away the fear. Second of all, it informs us. It, it, you, know, uh, you know, when we're educated, it's so much easier, isn't it? We, we can understand it better. And I think, I wish that this would start in schools. I know that some schools do have disabled kids going in there, but I think if only sort of the school as a whole could have sessions once a month, once every two months, at least at least two or three times a year, where everybody gets together, those kids who are, I'm going to use the word normal again, and I hate the word normal, I don't consider myself to be particularly normal, by the way, so I'm not insulting anybody when I say there are the normal and then there are the less normal or the different, whatever it is. Um, but I think, you know, if we started in schools, educating the kids in schools and h- helping kids to understand what these kids who are disabled or different, if, if we educate our kids in school and sort of get all the school together and have, and have discussions and have, uh, you know, debates uh, as to the best form of care and so on and so forth, we debate politics. You know, we debate all of you know all of this stuff. We debate we debate politics. We debate uh, authors. We debate the arts. We debate all sorts of things. But when has there ever been a real debate? And maybe there has been, but when has there been a real debate on you know somebody who has Down syndrome? What is the best form of action that other people can take to help the parents and to help the families who are going through this? And maybe the families don't want help. So if they don't want help, or if they don't want us to understand, we need to know that as well. Yeah, I know, I know there are um, actually another friend of mine that I had hoped would come on. Uh, his daughter has Down syndrome, and and uh, he has a community um, of uh, folks uh, with kids with Down syndrome. And it's a really cool, uh, supportive group uh, that deals with, you know, these issues that we're talking about. Um, and I, I, I'm going back to the why, because um, it's, it's, it's a lot about acceptance and there are different reasons of, for acceptance, right? You mentioned 
Uh, it reminds us how vulnerable we are. I think, I think there, there are other reasons too. I think, I think it, there, it's a matter of uh, some people just don't want to accept or, you know, are not comfortable with it. So they shut down and it just, well, it's uh, a fear-based thing, isn't it? It is a fear-based thing. I think it's, and there's an empathy piece to it as well, where you feel for, um, or you think you know what you're feeling for uh, someone with a disability and, uh, you know, the what ifs and how that must be rough and all that. I think that comes into it as well. Uh, so there's an empathy thing too, but all of those things, the fear that whether it's empathy, whether it's, you just don't want to deal with that. Um, uh, I think it, it all w inhibits um, conversation about it, right? It all, it all, they're all blockers essentially to having real good conversation about um, show. We had, um, in one of the schools um, that my kids are involved with, this topic came up, and um, there were there are a number of kids with special needs, and there was a whole discussion on uh, whether you essentially highlighted the fact that they had special needs and talked to the kids about it or not. And the the woman there, who's who's responsible for a lot of the special needs kids, said it's it's a it's a fine line because you don't want to blatantly educate kids about it and and say hey this is this is so and so, and this they have a disability because that almost becomes exclusionary too. So you have to be really careful about, you know, having conversation or being open to these things. At the same time, don't make it seem like they're that, the uh, yeah. That speaks loudly for the attitude of those right. of us who don't know. Right. Because from my point of view, these are special children. Right. They come for a reason. They right. give us so much. Uh, we learn so much from them. And to, I don't feel that we should be nervous about pointing that out. Right. I don't think we should be nervous about saying, okay, this is Johnny and he's, and he's, and he's blind. Right. Uh, which makes him extremely special. Right. Or this is, or this is, uh, you know, little Sarah, and Sarah has autism. the The only reason those kids are going to feel embarrassed, or, or you know, is, is if is if we're uncomfortable with it, and, and right. we put our feelings. Because if somebody pointed out to us, we don't know what it feels like to be blind, to be deaf, to have autism, to have whatever it is, Down syndrome or whatever. But every time an adult or even a child, every time somebody makes a big deal of, well, we, you know, we, we shouldn't necessarily consider them special. Every time we do that, we lessen who they are. Because the truth of the matter is, these kids are extraordinary and they are special. Because I firmly believe when God takes something from us, he always, always gives us something back. And as adults, if we can teach our children and if we can teach each other that we, we simply don't look for the, what they don't have. Don't look for what is missing. Look for what they do have. Look for the specialness of them. Look, look beyond what you're seeing physically. Because... These kids are special, and in my opinion, they should be treated as special, not given everything that they want. I don't mean spoiled, but certainly they are they are here to teach us something. We should be we should, you know, embrace them with gratitude and and ask to see what it is that we can learn from these children. Yeah, we have a we have a couple comments. Um, uh, Nettie's on. Uh, Andrea's on. Said, "Glad you're back." I guess after you, after you froze. <laughs> Rose, uh, Maggie said you froze. Uh, Nettie says, "I was so thrilled to see my autistic client sang a solo at her sixth grade graduation. What was more impressive was her classmates' cheers. It was so sweet." Uh, yeah, I mean, and that speaks to. Children are pretty accepting, too, and I don't know that we give them enough credit, right, uh, for that. Children, children 
accept these things. I mean, I've to I've told a story before about when I went into this. Uh, it was a special home for children with extraordinary and special needs. It was a tough place to be. And I thought that I was protecting my daughter, who was at that time 10 or 12 or something like that. And she begged me to let her go with me. And I was saying, no, you can't, because I was trying to protect her. This is from many years ago. Uh, and she was far, far more accepting and understanding of what was going on than ever I was, I can tell you. I mean, she just, it was just, uh, for her, it was it was normal it was natural and but for me it it was daunting so when i'm saying that people are frightened i'm not i'm not coming at this uh, as a criticism i'm not saying that you know that we sh well we should be better and we should take the opportunity to be more understanding but from that experience that i had i learned that these children who who seem to be some of them, and I'm looking now from uneducated eyes, they seem to be less. They seem to be maybe ugly. They seem to be, some of them, twisted. They seem to be, uh, you know, sort of, let's say, not normal. But what is normal anyway? And I'm not normal. I mean, look at me. I talk to dead people all the time, so I'm definitely not normal. But these kids, once you get to know them, once you get to understand them, they have something that the rest of us don't have. They have magic. They have a magic about them and a beauty about them. And if we, if we can embrace that and understand that, we see them in a whole different way. I just wish that as, you know, as the general public would have access to these kids more than we do. Yeah. Not, not like, not like going to the zoo and staring at them, you know, like they're, you know what I mean. But I'm talking about getting to know them, having them uh, live, as, you know, as ordinary a life as possible, being with us and and mingling with us and us with them. So we, so we don't see them as like outcasts, if you like. We don't see them as taboo we don't see the subject as taboo it's an all-embracing thing there are many cultures who do this around the world but unfortunately in our western world we we're not there yet by any means no i mean it's um like i, I said earlier it's, a, it's an overall acceptance thing too and uh a, a good majority of people aren't aren't accepting of others in general and i think uh people with uh disabilities fall on that the far end of, of the spectrum of acceptance right because they often are isolated through education they're isolated in in the jobs that they're doing um well, and the and, service and, yeah. and, and it's understandable in a way because they often do not have the mobility so they're they can be isolated because they don't have the mobility to get around us exactly. like most yeah. do so that you know so it's that's understandable. However, if we were to embrace this more, we would have, I mean, good gracious, they sent a man to the moon. Can't they figure out how to get kids who, you know, can't they figure out how to get kids at least mobile? Even, yeah. even if they, you know, if they make a rocket that goes to the moon, what's going on with the wheelchairs? Because some of them are so ancient and they don't, and don't do a thing and they, are such a struggle to use. I mean, really, where are the brains that we have in this world, those men and women who create these phenomena? I mean, look at the computer for a start. Look at all the things that we've done, and yet we still are seeing these antiquated forms for disabled people to get around. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you see, you see some innovative stuff, especially with robotics and... And uh, yeah. That, yeah, and and now yeah, you're seeing like implant stuff and prosthetics um, that are you know are getting there, but I'm sure it's a fraction of of the money that's invested into uh, you know cell phones or or, or, or any other like major selling technology, right? Yeah, I mean, if there's anybody out there listening to this who 
who has some influence and would like to be a spokesperson. Not that I can do a great deal, but I would jump on this, you know, this, the bandwagon, whatever it is you might call it. I would, you know, do what I could do. And if each person, if each little person was to do a little tiny thing, I mean, you know, the little person doing a little thing, it builds and builds until all of a sudden, I mean, you know, when we hear of tragedies, all of a sudden people can come up with, uh, you know, millions of dollars for one situation but i mean look at look at the um, in france right they came up oh. with uh, yeah overnight right I overnight know. i yeah. know i yeah. can't remember how many millions it was but it was a heck of a lot yeah and i just feel sometimes we've we you know what is it with with us human beings that we don't, you know, if we if we don't see it, if we can ignore it, if it's we can put it to one side, then we can pretend it isn't happening. And those people who are dealing with this on a daily basis, and they're dealing with kids who are different, uh, special, or, or requiring special needs, they're having to battle this on their own. I I had um, a client of mine uh, and her husband. They had their uh, teenage boy uh, was um, involved in a, a situation where it, it's a complicated thing but he got he, he again a disease and he was sort of 17 18 years old and all he did was lie in bed his parents were struggling his father had to work two jobs his mother had to stay home and take care of not only him but three other children and they would call me every week and I would try to talk to them and help them and what have you. But the struggle these, I mean, it's, this is just one instant. The struggle that these families go through, but yet, you know, if, if it's not clear, if it's not in our face, we'd rather not see it, wouldn't we? we because a lot of people consider it to be the ugly side of life or the seamy side of life. And yet, I'll say again, these children are they, are, they are magical. They have something that is magical. And here we are as human beings going through life, just just floating along and, and, you know, worrying about the next new pair of shoes that we're going to have or the next college that our child's going to. We don't, we don't give any real time, the majority of us, to this subject of you know, making this, this should be not just a national thing, this should be an international movement towards helping people. And I'll say again, if you can send a man to the moon, if you can create, create a super deluxe something or another Apple iPhone that's going to cost you this, this and this and it, and it all but walks on its own, you, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, come on, we have the technology, and we have the brains. People will say we don't have the money. Again, what you just said about France, if, you, if people want money, they can find it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly right. right. Yeah. So if we, had, if we have a recipe for having, having a, a, a positive attitude about um, kids with disabilities, folks with disabilities, um, conditions, illnesses. Uh, what what would what would be your 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 a couple of your main ingredients for that, Rosemary? Like what would what would what would we say um, is 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 paramount? Well, first of all, I think we can't speak because neither of us are in that position right. to to speak as parents. Or as family members, I mean, I don't know anyone in my family who ever who had any uh, un unusual or, uh, except you know, my grandmother was crazy. But you know what I'm saying. I mean, this we didn't ever. None of us in our family have never had to personally deal with or watch anybody that I know really well deal with. Uh, let's say, unusual or special circumstances uh, physically. Um, so we can only speak, I think, to what the rest of us can do. Those of us who, uh, you know, we might come into contact with someone from time to time, 
but it doesn't impact our lives. And so I think that the, the recipe, one of the ingredients in our recipe should be uh, to make sure that it impacts our life by, first of all, you know, going online, looking at these things, facing these things, going into homes, going into hospitals, uh, finding, finding out uh, how people manage, uh, maybe even joining a group that is, you know, is going to fund money for, for kids with special needs. I, I don't know, but I think that we have to have an attitude of, you know, just because it's not affecting us personally does not mean that it shouldn't affect us. So I think that those, the, you know, obviously sympathy, obviously empathy, but more than that, I think that we should, one of the ingredients is to at least once a week, if not every day, take a look at or find someone who needs our help or to find a child that we can sponsor or, I mean, there's, there are a trillion things you can do here, um, but to view people, to view those kids and to go visit kids. They have special homes, special hospitals, special schools, all of this kind of thing. But to try and become involved so that we can view these children and help to nurture them and to, you know, to find the magic that they, that they are giving to us. Because I, for one, I mean, I have been very fortunate because I have experienced the magic of these children. I've experienced the magic of earth angels. I've experienced uh, being able to, not just to comfort parents who are going through these situations when it gets to be unbearable, but I've also had the privilege of being able to say to those people, you've got a very special, this is a special child that you have here. And every time I've said it to a parent with a child like this, they have absolutely agreed. No matter how much hard work, no matter how much how tough it is, no matter how their finances are, I've not ever had a parent who has turned around and said to me, well, it's easy for you to say that. They immediately will say when you say to them they're special. And so I think that, you know, if we sort of maybe one of the ingredients is to, to sort of put it in our thoughts on a daily basis when we're sending our prayers, when we're sending our healing prayers, to put it out there, you know, to God, if there's any way that we can help, you know, let us know. Uh, so, you know, to be being positive and not looking at these kids as anything other than magical and don't be afraid to say that they're special because they really are. Uh, I, I love what you said about um, just because it doesn't affect us personally doesn't mean it shouldn't affect us. Um, I love that, that uh, statement that you said. Um, we have uh, Ma Mikey here, it looks like, uh, says, I know the struggle. I have uh, anaphylactic shock to many things. I've been in hospital 206 times, um, and he has a mobile disability as well. Um, he uh, said, cause a lot of stress. Uh, he or she, I'm not sure, I can't see the picture, caused a lot of stress and fear in going places. Um, and I think that's a Maggie. Maggie says they now have bionic legs or braces um, for for those to get up in wheelchairs. So there are advances that they're doing yeah, for sure. No, but we, we know that. But here is the deal, and this is the frustrating thing. Uh, we know that there are, we, look, I'm trying to think, the guy who was Batman and he had the accident on the horse, you know who I mean, right? Yeah, um, uh, super, Superman, Christopher Reeve. Hey, thank you, Christopher Reeve. Yeah. I, yeah. I apologise, I've forgotten his name for a minute there. Now, he had all the money in the world and he had an amazing equipment, he had uh, amazing things going on with him. Money, money, money. We're talking about money, money, money. And here we go again with the money uh, aspect of things. But the person who's living in a, a little uh, flat or a little apartment struggling, they can't go to work, they have to see to their child. I mean, 
the chances of them getting some of this stuff is honestly zero. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Unless you are wealthy or unless you are attached to or your child is attached to uh, an organization, a school it could be, or anywhere where people are going to be paying attention and maybe, you know, sort of uh, they can afford this stuff or their insurance can afford this stuff. There are, there are people out there in the world, maybe your neighbor, maybe your next door neighbor, maybe the person around the corner who just would like a break. And they'd just like for someone to say, you know, I'll I'll take him for a, for a, a minute or two if you if you like, you know, um, I'll 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 uh, you know I'll I'll uh, you know I can uh, I can do this or this. Uh, you go take a break for now. Go shopping for whatever that is. Uh, and um, we don't we don't do it because we don't think about it because it's not affecting us personally. But at the same time, I mean, just imagine, and I've done it, there is nothing more beautiful, there is nothing more fabulous and wonderful than spending time with an eight-year-old in a wheelchair. And maybe they can't talk to you, but you can tell them stories and you can communicate with them in whatever way that you find. And it's, I mean, it's not you giving to them it's you taking from them because they give you the magic. Do you, do you understand what that means? So we know of all of these modern stuff and people can write in and say, yeah, but there's all these modern technologies and all the rest of it. Well, you tell that to the person who can't afford uh, to, uh, to not work and they have to leave that child with a carer who doesn't really care or doesn't really understand. You tell that to people who have no money because they're not getting the benefit of this. And there's something quite sad about us as human beings that we're not recognizing this. And we're not, you know, we, I mean, I feel helpless when I'm talking about it because there's nothing really that we can do, is there? I mean, can we? What can we do, Al? Help I think, us out. What can we do? I, I think, I think if, if we have somebody um, that, has these experiences directly or has a child with disability, I think they can speak to it, speak to us much better about what we can do. Um, I, I think, I think in, in, in general though, like what you, what you're saying is, you know, is, is it as simple as uh, if someone has a disabled child saying, Hey, could I take, take them to the park if you're friends with them. Like, is it as simple as that? And it might be as simple as that, right? And maybe that's what starts breaking down that's uh, the walls, right? right? Yeah. It's the beginning. It's, yeah, it's the beginning, and, exactly. You know, and, um, and then, you know, getting to, take, taking them to the park and getting to know people and educating people. I mean, wh where are the brains? Where are the scientists? Where are those people who work day in, day out to produce drugs? Uh, where are the people who work day in and day out to send rockets to the moon? Where are the guys who created the satellites? Where are they? I mean, I would love them to approach me so that I can say to them, what happened here? You, there's, a, there's a huge part of society that you're missing. Yeah. Because as much as it's a fantastic idea to go to the moon, and as much as it's an amazing idea to get yourself up, and as much as it's a wonderful idea to have all this modern techno technology going on, oh, hang on, hang on a minute. Because, you know, what about the here and now? What about the today? You know, let's, let's big ingredient in the bowl. Can we sort of focus on what's going on with our neighbors can we focus on what's going on with these kids or the parents of these kids who they might not need help financially but certainly they need people to understand this is a special child here this is a beautiful child i've seen parents tear up when i've said that to them because most people don't see that child as special and they tear up because somebody's recognizing that. What is wrong with our society that we're not recognizing that? And and ex and excluding too. I mean, and that's and a, that's a 
that's a big part of it, right? I mean, don't stop, stop excluding because you don't understand. Stop excluding because you're uncomfortable with it. Um, stop doing like something you said, speaking over someone in a wheelchair because you're not comfortable looking at them. Like those, those are the kind of things that if we get rid of that exclusionary mindset and, and, and so what if you're not comfortable? Uh, what do you, I mean, what, you get, <laughs> what, what, what do you always say? Get a grip. I always say, suck it up. Like if it makes you uncomfortable, so it makes you uncomfortable. The more, the more you, you stop excluding, the, the, the less uncomfortable you're going to be. I mean, we're not but, all going to be comfortable with, with certain disabilities because it, it's... But it's only because it's new. It's only because right. it's exactly. strange to for that time or maybe the time after that. But once you get used to it, it's like kids in school. They're used to it. They accept kids. They accept the, the, those who are different. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I just... It's so frustrating because... You know, we are only, you know, we don't have a great deal of say in the world, do we? We, we you know, I mean, I, I, I sort of we can deal with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But I would love to be, I mean, what happened to Donald Trump? You know, bragging, boasting and all the rest of it, as he may have cause to do. I don't know. I'm not a political animal. But how about doing something like this? gathering these this this group of children these special children and let's work on them let's gather this part of our society together as a whole not an individual here and an individual there when are we going to get a politician or a scientist or somebody who has influence when are we going to get someone who can actually say okay we all need to get together we all need to come together band together to 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 change things so that we're recognizing these these kids you know i mean yes, exactly. going, going to the theater going to the movies they've got like two or three spaces for disabled the disabled they've got one you can guarantee one at the most two disabled but uh toilets wherever right. you go it's it's two have we you know <laughs> can we can we just be bring them in to our society. Stop excluding them. You know we should all have wide bathrooms. Never mind just the wheelchair people. You know we should. It should be a normal thing that we accommodate. They should be able to go to a bathroom that doesn't say wheelchair on it. Yeah, it's true, right? Because it's exclusionary in nature. Yeah. Again. Yeah. 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 So, so anyway, now we've sort of aired our stuff. I'm not sure we've got <laughs> any ingredients, except could everybody do something, even if it's to say a prayer every day and to and to take note of who and what is around you and to, you know, and if you get an opportunity or if you get a chance to voice, you know, that these kids are special and to teach other people that the and if you with your own kids, if you get an opportunity to teach them that that these kids are special and they're magical and they they're here for a purpose for us they give us something they're here they're here going through the these struggles themselves so they can teach us something so we have the opportunity to learn and to grow and to become more of who we can be so and and, and even if you can't speak to someone with a disability if they can't um, they can't verbally say anything there's always a caregiver that you could have a conversation with and and talk to and and be open and honest about right. things without without being intrusive but yeah. you know th there's always people that are willing to have a conversation because yeah. I, I would say rarely people even try right the, to do that so you may be surprised that at how educated you could become just by talking to someone uh, yeah, yeah. Just with them. And, uh, and sort of have insight into that other world that we it seems we don't want to know right but exactly. we should but we should know so all right so I, I just want to put it out there if anyone who listens to this has some insights for us some help for us we would love to hear from you info at everythingisattitude.com if you'd like to come on the show and talk about it if you have a solution or part of a solution or even a little iota of a solution or an idea please you know we're, i'm begging you please come on and and uh, talk to us and educate us because that's what this program is all about we want 
people to have the positive attitude of learning, growth, bring it on, baby. That's what I want to say. <laughs> All right. So, Al, thank you very much for, I'm sorry for every, everybody, it was cutting in and out. Thank you for uh, being my wonderful co-host. Uh, we're hoping next week to get Danny. Um, Danny, sorry. <laughs> uh, we're hoping next week to get Danny on the show to talk about what it's like actually living with and ha being part of a family with a child who is, and I'm not going to use that word, a, a child who is magical, a child who is different but special, a child who will give us something really, really wonderful and special. So, uh, so we're hoping to do more of that. And in the meantime, until I see you all again, uh, you can get me, Rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com, Al at Al at alpizano.com and all of that stuff. And uh, so you can, you know, you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on all of that stuff. Uh, so we'd love to hear your comments. So I'll thank you very much. Thank you to all of you who are watching. And until I see you all again, you see, we winged it, Alan. It was fine. Uh, <laughs> I see we, you we, all again. we battled through, uh, right? <laughs> we're doing our Thursday morning show, as always, on YouTube, which is um, the Spirit World Sees All. We will back, be back here next Friday, hopefully with Danny. Danny, <laughs> Danny yeah. and, uh, and another topic to talk about. And, uh, and uh, until I see you all again, uh, please, please, please have a very, 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 and a more very 